finally, we have the, uh, this is a funny little word, the pitch deck attached to the email. Now again, like I said, Silicon Valley is really beginning to change the language that we use in the business world. And whatever starts out in Silicon Valley eventually trickles down into the rest of the world because we start seeing it and reading about it in Forbes and the Wall Street Journal and so on, the Financial Times. So what is a pitch deck? A pitch deck is basically a, a kind of PowerPoint presentation or whatever software that you use of your company and your pitch. Again, don't overload them with information. It could have six slides, seven slides, you know, a brief little presentation. It could be a video if you want it. Um, it, but most people just put it in the form of, you know, your usual software presentation. Um, so this is a pitch deck, right? It's just like a little pitch presentation. And that's what they do. And again, they may watch it or they may just look at your email and go, okay, this isn't for me to look at, but I think my coworker would really be interested in this because she handles um, industries like logistics firms, for example. Um, so you want to, you know, again, make it easy, make it clear, for goodness sake, use software that everyone can open all over the world, like Microsoft. Um, don't get fancy with Macs because people don't like them and they don't really know how to use them in business, generally speaking, except for certain industries like media and entertainment. Uh, but generally, you're better off with uh, Word and, and uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so this is this is what you need to to have there. And hold on. Okay. Now, here's what not to do. Right? I've told you what you should do, and here's what you should not do. First of all, obvious mistakes to avoid. Most cold emails get deleted by the recipient, the person who receives them, after a few sentences, or sometimes after just a glance. They look at them and boom. Yeah, or, you know, don't like the subject line. Uh, looks like spam. Oh, it went into the spam folder. Who cares? Not, people don't waste time looking through spam. Now, why would they do this? The most common reasons for this are the content or the format is so bad that the very act of reading is painful, all right? You don't want to put your reader in pain, especially if you're trying to get them to give you some money. Or the sender has been so inconsiderate of the reader's time that the reader can't possibly imagine initiating a business relationship with this person. Now, what would that, what would examples of that uh, be? For example, um, let's say you don't put your contact details in them, right? There's no way that they can research you online. You don't have your company's website, and so they have to do a Google search to track you down, and you have a company that has a very common name worldwide. Or you don't know where you're writing from. They don't even know where the company's based. So don't make them work. You don't want to do that. Your signature line should have all of your details, and you should be easily traced, easily trackable. Um, maybe you put things, like I said, you put things in a format that, you know, it's some random thing that you created this presentation out of and you don't really want to spend the money to get Microsoft Office, so you went to uh, Best Buy or some kind of store and you bought this thing out of a box and everyone's like, I can't read this file. And no, I'm not going to download a special file to read you, look at your pitch deck, right? So that's being inconsiderate. You just, you know, don't do that. They'll just, they're not going to bother, believe me. All right, so to avoid this fate, here are some features that should not appear in your cold email to venture capitalists. 
One, extreme length, all right? More than one or two long paragraphs, or long blocks of text with no spacing and no bullet points and no nothing and just bleh, right? Nobody reads blocks of text. They don't. They're just, everyone's under so much time pressure to read quickly, absorb massive amounts of information incredibly quickly. So don't make, especially middle-aged men and women who are often in this kind of uh, situation, don't make us go like, what, what, right? <laughs> We're not going to do it. Our eyes are giving out. Here's another one, a long or a stupid title in your subject line. Like, are you ready for the most amazing opportunity ever? And you have like four question marks. Come on. Spam. Right? These are business people. It's okay. Tell them what you want. You don't need, it's not clickbait. You don't have to draw them in like that. Just be straight. Lack of numbers. Right? DC guys and gals, they want to see numbers. How much do you want? How many people work in your firm? What's your annual turnover? Right? You better have some numbers. If you don't, you're really not ready to, to, to handle getting a, a cash infusion of, of $10 million if you don't know what your numbers are or if you don't want to tell the other people what they are. All right? They're going to find out anyway. So make sure you have that. Make sure you know what it is before you go out trying to raise money. Um, misspellings, poor punctuation, yeah, that's more of an amateur, look, seriously, there are a lot of translation programs out there, editing programs. You can go on Fiverr.com and get somebody to review that for you, you know, for five bucks. If, you're, if, if this email could lead to you raising, you know, $20 million, isn't it worth paying five bucks to get somebody to look it over and correct it for you? Of course it is, right? Um, address to the wrong person or the right person, this is kind of even worse, or to the right person with his or her name spelled incorrectly. Yeah, that's what websites are for. You can check this stuff out. You can find them. DC people are often very, they're kind of all over the internet uh, in LinkedIn. Even if you don't connect with them personally, you can probably find their name, right? They set up their profile. They know how to spell their name. Make sure you do it right. Now, next one, sending it to a venture capital company that doesn't cover your industry. Total waste of time, right? So, for example, if you have a bamboo bicycle company and you want, you know, 20 million bucks to make a factory uh, in Vietnam where there's plenty of bamboo, why are you pitching a company that deals with software? No reason. Waste of your time, waste of their time. It's just bad form. So don't just blanket it, right? When you're coming up with your list of people to, um, to connect with, be selective. Just be selective. And actually, when you do that, you're going to, um, you know, you're going to just kind of good, build goodwill. Um, another example that, that I know that literary agents have, I'm more in the book field, um, literary agents, they say, well, I deal with historical fiction. You know, I deal with romance set in the time of uh, Abraham Lincoln and, and the Revolutionary War with George Washington. This is my niche. But then they get, like, manuscripts that are science fiction set in the year, you know, 5,000. Why? Do a little research. Right, so there we go. So the, the, really, that's it. The, the message should, should fill half a page at most. All right, and this structure really shows respect for your recipient's time, but it also, and very important, it packs a ton of very attractive details about your company into a very small space. All right, now remember, the purpose of this email is not to get them to send you a check for $20 million. That's not the purpose. What you want to do is to convince the reader 
to talk to you. Another way to put it is to engage you in an initial qualifying conversation, right? Meaning, can we go somewhere from here or not? So they're going to want to talk to you. So this is what you want to do. It's kind of like a dating letter. <laughs> How are you? It's love. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. And if you're interested, oh, I'd love to talk to you. Let's just uh, get in touch with it whatever way you want. Right, so there's that. So you want to engage them in an initial, qualify, initial qualifying conversation. That's number one. And to allow that same person to spread your email and your pitch deck to the person or people who can best handle it as, you know, as quickly and as easily as possible. All right. Now, again, some VC firms are very large. You know, they have departments, they have specialists. Some VC firms are like two guys, usually. I mean, it's usually guys. So you want to be able to make it easy for them to go, ah, you know what, I think my buddy over in uh, shipping will want to look at this because this is something that he's into. Or, wow, I really want to share this with everybody because there are only four of us and we decide things together, so this is something that we should look at. Okay, so remember, like, enable editing and stuff like that. Don't put passwords or anything. Believe me, they're not, if they think your idea is valuable, they're not going to share it with anybody outside um, unless, you know, it's someone is a buddy of theirs who, you, who handles your industry and you mistakenly send it to them, which you shouldn't do anyway. So don't worry about uh, confidentiality and passwords and lock stuff. I mean, believe me, they're not going to edit your slides, right? Just, just take it out.